The Gear VR is a mobile headset manufactured by Samsung and developed in collaboration with Oculus, the Facebook-owned company behind the Oculus Rift headset. The Gear VR headset only works with selected Samsung phones of the Samsung Galaxy family. You connect the phone using a USB-C or micro USB port and the headset itself has a touchpad on the side and a button to go home and to go back. And since 2017, there is also a controller added here. The headset itself has two sensors. One of them is a proximity sensor that activates when you put it on. And the other one is a, an IMU or inertia measurement unit of which I'm going to speak about uh, very shortly. Uh, how the headset works it tracks three degrees of freedom and this is only rotation. Basically, if you have the headset on, if you are on a VR experience, and if you jump on real life, you are not going to jump on VR. So that is what this means. Only rotation is tracked. You can see 110 degrees, that is your field of view. And uh, just so that you have an idea, the uh, humans see 180 degrees. The controller itself, is, uh, the rotation of the controller is also tracked, so that is also three degrees of freedom. There's no position tracking for the for the controller either. So think of it as a laser pointer that you are holding with your hand at a fixed distance from your from your uh, from your body, and that you just rotate around. So that is one way to look at it. Um, when it comes to rendering, and this is very important for us game developers, is that um, the headset itself, as I mentioned, comes with a sensor which is an IMU. IMU stands for Inertia Measurement Unit, and it is a sensor that contains gyroscopes and accelerometers. It is a sensor that can measure this rotation. Basically, the sensor will tell um, the, our, our uh, software what direction we are looking at in virtual reality. And the fact that the headset comes with its own IMU and, and that IMU has low latency, which means that you, we get the measurement right away or in a very short time, it means that experiences can feel quite smooth. And if you look around in your game, um, it shouldn't feel like chopped or kind of laggy, which, which can happen, for example, with Google Cardboard, which relies on your phone's IMU. So if, you're, if your phone doesn't have a good IMU, um, the, the experience can, uh, uh, can be a bit uh, jagged in that platform. There is also... Um, kernel level integration and uh, the phones that are ready for Gear VR come with a lot of optimizations and, and a very important one is a reprojection which means that if the frame rate of your game drops for some reason for example there's too much too many things happening um, the the, uh, the previous frame will be shown um, so that the frame rate stays the same this is the number of frames per second so that it keeps uh, at 60 is the, the target in Gear VR, so that it keeps at that, at that number and the experience still feels uh, smooth and, and most people uh, won't notice that the same frame was presented, but it will definitely feel uh, smoother than when this optimization is not present. When it comes to developing for, for Unity, we are very lucky because Unity natively supports the Gear VR, building apps for the Gear VR. Um, the only thing that at the time of this recording is not natively supported is um, getting the rotation of the controller. Um, and for that, you would need to use the, um, the Oculus SDK. Um, but everything else, and um, it is uh, supported natively. So nothing is required for you to, to build games for this platform. Now let's go to Unity and let's build our game for the Gear VR. Uh, but before I can do that, before I can build my game for the Gear VR, we need to download uh, what's called a signature file from the Oculus website. So let's go to the Oculus website. Let's go to the um, go to developer.oculus.com, and you have to sign up as an Oculus developer. Once you've signed up as an Oculus developer, for which you can use your Facebook account or you can create a new account. Um, you have to go to the dashboard of this Oculus website, so dashboard.oculus.com. And then there will be a link here to go to Tools. And in Tools, you need to enter your device ID. And the way to get that, um, so you, you need to have your device already configured to be used for development, is to use the ADV devices command. So in your, uh, your terminal, just type ADV devices, 
and that will show you the ID of your of your phone. So you have to copy that value and paste it here and then download a file. That is a file that basically authorizes the, the app to be run on that phone. Um, and that is something you need to do for development. And you can find some more information in this in this page. Now, uh, where do we have to place that file in our computer? Well, this is the folder of our project. So the, uh, the way to place it is you have to go to assets, create a new folder called plugins. Inside of that plugins folder, create a new folder called Android. Don't worry about this meta file that is created automatically by Unity. So ignore that, just create another folder called Android and then a folder called assets. The, the case needs to match the ones you see here. So it is uh, well, your assets folder, then plugins like this with capital P, Android with capital A and then assets. And inside assets, you can place your Okay, the, the file that you download from the Oculus website. So without this, you're going to get an authorization error on your phone. You're not going to be able to run the game or the app. Okay, so after we've done that, uh, let's go to Unity. And as you can see, I have my my assets here, assets folder, and you can see that the plugins folder is here. And inside the plugin, we go Android and assets and the file you download, which is unique for your phone. Uh, so I'm not going to be providing the file for my phone. Um, so once you have that, you are pretty much good to go. You, uh, you need what you need to do is go to File, Build Settings, and in here you need to add the scenes that you're going to build. If you don't add any scene and there's only one scene in your game, that is added by default. Then um, that is the scene that's going to be built. But I always like to add them just to really see it explicitly in here. In Platform, make sure to pick Android and then to click switch platform so that you are switched to the Android platform as your main build target. Then click on player settings. And in here, there are a few fields that we need to complete, which are common for all Android applications. For example, your company name, the, the name of the, of, the, of the game, and uh, you can also add your icon. But the, what we're actually, uh, what we're interested in the most here, if you go to uh, the, uh, you need to make sure that the Android icon here is selected. Uh, go to other settings. So make sure to expand the other settings tab and make sure to click virtual reality supported. So that is something we need to add in here. And then in here, I'm going to remove this. So i show you how you can add it. Uh, you are able to add the, the SDK, the platform you're targeting. In this case, it's the Gear VR. But what, what I will say here is Oculus. Because as I mentioned, the Gear VR is uh, developed in collaboration with Oculus. Um, and then something important as well is the package name. The uh, what you enter here is uh, is called um, it is called that reversed reverse URL type of notation. So for example, if you have a website type like you know com dot your website and then dot the name of the of the game like a short name without spaces. Um, if you don't have a website, that's fine. You can make one that one app here. This doesn't have any, any doesn't have to be a real website at all. This is just your unique identifier. So it usually starts with your own unique kind of company or personal uh, name, and then the name of the product itself. Then on uh, the target APIs, uh, in this case, I've selected that the minimum API level is Android Marshmallow. That is the the version of my phone at this moment, and I don't think that there are phones that have a, a lower version than this that actually work with Gear VR. So you need to find that out at, this, at the time that you're doing this. Um, but I think Marshmallow is, is fine. And, and I'm, I'm leaving all the other options untouched in this, in this part. And then we have two options. We can just build the APK file or we can build and run it on the device. So, and this can take a couple of seconds or a couple, uh, a couple of minutes the first time you do it. So what I'm going to do now is run the build and run just to be sure that it's all working. So I'm going to click that. And again, my uh, my my phone is connected and it, it is shown here. So that is all working fine. Um, so I'm prompt with this build uh, build uh, file. And for that, I've created a folder called builds in my Unity project. And I'm going to call this game.apk. You can have your own naming convention. You can call it however you want. And uh, maybe you want to call it differently for each platform. If you're building for many platforms or you want to have some sort of numbering system. So that's up to you. I'm just calling it game and I'm going to replace the one that's already there. All right. So now the process begins. Okay. So I have the application now open on my phone 
and it tells me to insert my device to my Gear VR. So that is what I'm going to do now. And this is uh, loading in the Gear VR and it says here that it requires my permission to access photos, media and files on my device. I'm going to allow that. And uh, it requires all these permissions that just came by default. So there we go, VR. All right, so we are now able to run our game on the Gear VR. I'm using the Gear VR's native video recording tool and which uh, makes this supposedly look uh, clean so you shouldn't be seeing the double, the double camera. And as you can see, I can look around and if I press my the button, I'm able to activate this elevator and to keep on moving around and whatnot. So there are a few things that we fix here. There's an issue with the shadow that looks like jittering. Uh, but other than that, looks great. It feels really smooth when I move around and that's it for the Gear VR. So um, let's now continue with the course and there will be a couple of things that we still need to do in our game.